So you've come to a harp recital <laughs> in the Lyric Theatre. We only build it as comedy because nobody ever buys tickets for harp recitals. <laughs> so now that you're here, I've got 147 medieval tunes in B-flat. <laughs> Lock the doors. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for culture. There's that voice again. <laughs> I was okay until I went on that website. www. Pages and pages and pages of harps. It's like porn for harpists. <laughs> See, my first harp was a Paraguayan harp, and I used to write funny songs on it, but then I sold it to a girl in Cork and lost my sense of humour for about 15 years. <laughs> Till that day, when I saw this, in the button and three months later a big wooden coffin arrived in the post and I prized open the lid and put my hands on the strings and fell in love and started singing in a South American accent <laughs> so where shall we start huh where huh you like to go to the hospital? Yes, babe. You're not supposed to be so enthusiastic so soon. <laughs> like, I meant to coax you, you know? So let's pretend, okay? <laughs> you like to go to the hospital? No. <sighs> Just be silent, right? <laughs> you like to go to the hospital? All right, it's not the kind of question that's going to have you screaming yes. <laughs> But if I could just assure you that no one's <laughs> going to get hurt in the singing of this song, yeah? And um, I'll sing it with... Um, I've forgotten what I was going to say. You've totally thrown me. You're laughing in the wrong places. We, uh, well, anyway, look. Would you like to go to the hospital? You can say yes now. Yes. Mm. Okay, do it properly. Would you like to go to the hospital? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> I have a little friend. He's a tiny bit weird. He has a scraggy beard and thick glasses. He drives a dodgy van. Stays remarkably calm. And when I ask him what he like, he say, well, sickly at night. I like to go to hospital. You like to go to hospital? Yes. <laughs> you like to go to hospital? Yes. Do you feel unwell? No, I feel fine. <laughs> but you like to go to hospital? Yes. Oh, well, he like to go to hospital and watch the nurses working. He thinks that they are beautiful and very kind and caring. Like to fantasize that they're giving him attention, not to mention the patients they abandon on the corridors of random. He met a lovely girl. His hair is sprung up into instantaneous curls. <laughs> he asked her for a date. And she say, wonderful. Yes, great. He took her by the hand. Led her to the dodgy fam. <laughs> when he asked her what she liked, she said, well, secretly at night, I like to go to hospital. You like to go to hospital? Yes. You like to go to hospital? Yes. I like to go to hospital too. It's true. They like to go to hospital. 
Yes. Oh, well, they like to go to hospital and watch the nurses working. They think that they are beautiful, very kind and caring. Like to fantasize, they're giving them attention. Not to mention the patients they abandon on the corridors of random. And with these skip and they hop past the hospital shop, hop the escalator to the restaurant in the sky. The sun is rolling down the back of Black Mountain, illuminating Belfast in a violet hue. It's so beautiful here, it's so clean. Much nicer than Tesco Canteen. They like to go to hospital and watch the nurses working. They think that they are beautiful, very kind and caring. Like to fantasize, they're giving them attention. Not to mention the patients they abandon on the corridors of random. The patients they abandon on the corridors of random. The patients they abandon on the corridors of Random. So I've been writing songs all my life. My first song I wrote when I was three and it was for my parents called I Have Been Long Enough With You. <laughs> Even then, I was packing my wee red suitcase trying to leave home but maybe that's because I was born on the Falls Road in yeah. 1970. Not a great time to be born on the Falls Road. I've got a song about it. It's called Being Born. My mother, she has to soak the towels and vinegar and put them around the windows to stop the tear gas from coming through. But it doesn't matter, because the house blows up anyway. And the, the glass, it ends up in the carry cot. Don't leave me here. Don't do it. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. I'm going to grow up with a Belfast accent. <laughs> help, 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 help. No, 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 no. They're going to inject me. Oh, oh, oh.
I come from a long line of magicians, musicians. <laughs> My grandfather is a Donegal fiddle player from the highlands of Donegal. And my mum, she plays harp, and dad, he sings funny songs. And mum plays harp. Dad sings funny songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a weird combination. <laughs> People think, because I play the harp, that I'm really cultured and everything, but I just do it for the money. something fun, I could do something fun. Could like get you to beat me with the paddle of a big canoe. Or I could like bust my leg trying to walk on the high drop. If I wanted to do something fun, I would do something bloody fun. I want to play the harp. Do you know how difficult it is and how hard it is to carry? And this bit up here, you need to be a bloody mechanic to sort this stuff. And the tuning, when they turn the lights on, it goes 
book mad out of tune. I have to, to like carry it around and tramping in fields and tubes and playing the harp. And Jessie J, when she says she doesn't do it for the money, don't believe her. She's lying. I want to rip the stilettos off her shoes and show them in the sockets of her eyes. I play for the pain. It's just a job. I really normally hold that note for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages and ages, but I actually forgot to breathe before I started singing it. So you're just gonna have to imagine I'm finished. Bob, job. Oh, that's the wrong face. Hold on. People think that I care about the culture in Ireland because I have sort of red hair and play the harp. So seriously, what does all that culture boil down to? Weddings. <laughs> I hate weddings. Why does nobody ever book me to play for their divorce? <laughs> I'd be so much better suited to that type of work. <laughs> weddings. Do you know? I charge 50 quid extra if I have to learn Celine Dion <laughs> or Shania Twain. And I charge 50 quid extra if I have to listen to that bullshit about Adam's rib. <laughs> In fact, I only go to church if I'm getting paid. <laughs> but you's, you's want culture, don't you? You came to a harp recital in the Lyric Theatre, and I'm the harpist, and it's up to me to be all cultural, and I think we should, we're just gonna have to tick that box. We're gonna have to get cultural at some point in the night, and I think we should just get over and done with. Um, we should do some like poetry or something, and I can play some wifty wafty plinky plonky music, and, and um, luckily we haven't planned this at all. My mum happens to be in the audience, and um, she happens to be a, a woman who set a whole load of Yeats music to, or Yeats poetry to music, and made albums, and uh, I think it would be really fitting if my mum came down onto the stage, and and um, and we got all cultural with my mummy. <coughs> Welcome to the stage, the mother of all mothers, the harpist of all harpists to the side room. It's Marie. Are you, is your name Burns or O'Neill? <laughs> Burns, Burns, no, no, O'Neill. O'Neill for the stage. Uh, it's Burns in order to make you legitimate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go for Burns then. <laughs> this is Give It Up for Marie Burns. <laughs> so it's the late Isle of, of Inishbury. I will arise and go now and go to Inishbury and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of morning to where the cricket sings. There, midnight's all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. My eyes stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey. I hear it in the deep heart's core. Luxury 
apartments I'll build there of heavy metal made. Lots of parties will I have there, and lots of noise will I make, and all my rubbish will be dumped in the lake to pollute. have to say about the process of fracking. <laughs> He'd probably think it was a disaster, a recipe for disaster. A recipe for disaster. Take one planet Earth move to a spot of great local beauty. Mix the local water with 500 toxic chemicals and set aside. <laughs> Bore down into the earth's crust and frack open the rock below, below the local's feet. Then pour in the toxic chemical mixture and extract the clean, natural gas. Then frack off with the profits and let the locals to get sick die and clean up a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Talking about disasters, I've got a wee song about marriage for you. It was divorce that wrecked my marriage. <laughs> Kathleen O'More, she called me up at three on Saturday. She and her husband were choosing wallpaper. What did I have to say? The pink was very nice. The gold one caught the light. Embossed was expensive, made them quite pensive in a recession. What was my advice? of this could make me die and if I wasn't on the phone I could look her in the eye then the solution appeared in an epiphany of light the angels blew trumpets to prove I was right the skies they opened God's laughter filtered down this can I just say <laughs> can you all be very impressed at that heart plan <laughs> Sky 
eyes They opened, God's laughter filled her down Disguised as little bubbles that burst all around And this is what I said to her that day in Belfast on the telephone there's nothing technical going on here for you to see. Why don't you get divorced and join the circus? Cause then you won't have any walls. Why don't you get divorced and join the circus? The only curtain you'd see would be for curtain calls. Get divorced and join the circus. It's the only decent thing that you could do. Get divorced and join the circus. If life's wallpaper catches up with you Get divorced on grounds of boredom If your ex hasn't called you up, you could just ignore him <laughs> And you might find a clown To alleviate your frown Get divorced and join the circus Sing along, divorced and join the circus Get divorced and join the Brilliant! You're brilliant! Give yourself a round of applause. It was divorce that wrecked... Oh no, I said that already. Um, I want the divorce! But we're not even married. Stop getting technical on me! <laughs> uh, I did get divorced. And I did run away and join the circus. And then I ran away from the circus and joined the Horse Drawn Theatre Company. I only went for two weeks, but I ended up staying three years and we walked from Aberdeen to Brighton doing shows in it, like with a gypsy wagon. I got to Brighton, ran away again, and I ended up in London, and this is all true actually, <laughs> in a flea pit, which was a horse box that had been converted into a theatre. And little teeny weeny tiny Diddy weedy fleas did circus tricks. And the ringmaster, like, he was so flatulent. <laughs> it was such a small space. And the day he started doing shadow puppetry with his knob, I decided it was time <laughs> to leave. <laughs> and that was when I ended up in comedy. <laughs> but I was being serious. I was wondering why they were laughing. There's no fun in comedy. <laughs> There's no money in comedy. There's no ball gowns in comedy. There's not even any harps in comedy. It's people. And funny enough, that's what my songs are about, people. I've got this song about a girl from Belfast and how she's better than Google. Yeah, she's like the cultural epicenter of everything cool that's going on. She knows everything. We want her to start her own app called Romy's Belfast. <laughs> Romy's Belfast better than Google. Romy's Belfast better than Google. Will I sing you the song? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll sing you the song. This is about Romy. She's not here tonight. But sure, you got my mum. Because <laughs> she's the lucky one. Romy is better than Google, full of places to see. Romy is better than Google, and I mean cultural light. Romy is better than Google, so if you want to go, just big book Romy. Get yourself to the best show. Romy knows what the word is down on the street. Not even Google Maps could compete. Romy is better than Google, so if you want to go, just big book Romy. Get yourself to the best show. The Cathedral Quarter would be lost without her. There'd be festivals crying. Well, there's no denying that Romy is better than Google full of places to see. Romy is better than Google, and I mean cultural light. Romy is better than Google, so if you want to go, just bake book Romy. Get yourself to the best show, bake book Romy. Get yourself to the best show. She's not 
hold me, but you'll get her on her phone, me. So uh, Facebook, surveillance. Like Facebook, everybody's watching everybody else. Um, surveillance. Surveillance is just not what it used to be. When, when I was young, surveillance was so interactive. When we were on our way to school, the army used to eye us up through the barrel of their guns. And we used to do wee dances for them. La, 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 see enough and all. Be cheeky to them. It was good fun. Those are the days. It was so nice <laughs> to have an interpersonal connection with the face of your oppressor. <laughs> These days, surveillance, it's so much more subtle. Hmm. Surveillance, it's so much more subtle. I should really just stick to doing it like that. It's surveillance is so much more subtle. But funny enough, it's much, much harder to get away with murder. CCTV is watching me for my own protection and security. CCTV is listening to me for my own protection and security. Well, it's a invasion, invasion, invasion of privacy. Well, it's a invasion, invasion, invasion of privacy. My iPhone device is tracking me for my own protection and security and my iPhone device is thumbprinting me for my own protection and security well it's a invasion 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 of privacy well it's a invasion 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 of privacy world destruction your life ain't living the human race is becoming a disgrace nationalities are fighting with each other your call is in the queue it is being recorded for our protection everything you say and do will be held against you beware the singularity we will exterminate we will exterminate we will exterminate 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 and, oh. was I? Um, dyslexia. <laughs> dyslexia has really affected me, you know, and um, when I was young we used to be travelling along 
in the car and I'd see a spot of lovely, beautiful place. There was panic area. And I thought, it must be so confusing and difficult for adults when they leave the city and they need these panic areas to, to like get themselves together. And I was really stressed about, about growing up because I thought, you never, how are you going to know where you're going, you know? And then, um, but my mum got me a, a book to explain the facts of life. And I thought that a great sense of humour, because I, th I thought they called it public hair because <laughs> it was private, you know, and they were just, they just thought this was funny, obviously. You shouldn't show anybody this hair, so it's private. So we'll just call it public. It's really hard to make sense of the world when you're dyslexic. But as a musician, I play by ear. I've never learnt music, so I, I don't read music. And um, it's created its own problems with the dyslexia, you know, because there's these two tunes that I have crosswired in my brain that a harpist should never, ever, ever get mixed up. And one of them is dum dum da dum 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 da dum, and the other one is dum dum da dum 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 Bride is standing at the back of the church. <laughs> I've only got a 50-50% chance of getting it right. <laughs> My mother's never going to give me another wedding to do again. <coughs> funerals, we end up playing a lot of funerals as well. I was playing at my auntie's funeral and afterwards her wee friends all came out and stood around me. It was in the Falls Road. They were all wearing these wee brown furry hats and these wee brown furry coats and uh, they were standing around me going, music was beautiful. <laughs> and music was beautiful. <laughs> music was beautiful. Music was beautiful. <laughs> Your heart's gorgeous. <laughs> Your heart's gorgeous. Your heart's gorgeous. Your heart's gorgeous. Will you play at my funeral? And will you play at my funeral? And will you play at my funeral? And will you play at my funeral? <laughs> what do you say to that? When is it? <laughs> well, I don't like deleting dead people's numbers from my phone. Dead people's numbers from my phone I used to call you Call you when I was alone Well, I don't like deleting Dead people's numbers from my phone Death is such a downer, downer Rarely goes well Was the end of you and me. Now all I got for company, all I got for company is the shadow of your memory. This is the instrumental. What do you want for tenor? Back and vocals. Comprehensive contact list you've got. Oh, I'm not that popular. Besides, most of them are dead. <laughs> oh, well, I don't like deleting dead people's numbers from my phone. Oh, don't like deleting dead people's numbers from my phone.
really glad that one's over. That's the first time I played that in public. <laughs> so, you know, I'm glad to get that over and done with. Um, that's the thing about getting older, or indeed coming from Northern Ireland. Do you know so many dead people? <laughs> See, traveling with a harp, it's like traveling with a dead person in a big wooden coffin. It's like traveling with a dead person that's temperature sensitive. loads of fun. <laughs> you want to try taking one of these bad boys through airport security? So we song just about that. <laughs> to the airport. <laughs> oh, it just arrived. That's good. Well, I was traveling through the airport last Tuesday with my baggage, as us musicians do. When I came across security, he looked at me severely and said, Miss Burns, you only need... I just realized he sounds like a guy from the hospital song. <laughs> It must be his brother. Miss Burns, you only need one box. Why have you got two? I thought it was an excellent question, considering the nature of his job. So I let my look linger on him, and then I said, after a pause, One box is quite harp-shaped And they're both immeasurably long But to assume they are two harp boxes Well, I'm afraid your assumption's quite wrong And both boxes are exceedingly wooden But one is flatter, can't you see? And haven't you noticed the wreath of flowers or the letters R I P? <gasps> Miss Burns, it is your husband. I'm so sorry he passed away. Oh, no, no, no. That was years ago. My ex-husband is doing quite okay. Uh, Miss Barnes, it is your boyfriend. I'm so sorry he passed away. Oh, no, no, no. My boyfriend went to Rio for a week and decided he'd rather stay. Miss Barnes, it is your lover. It is your lover, is it not? Uh, Miss Barnes, you're going to have to tell me. Who is in the box? Oh, well, a large crowd had gathered and were listening quite intently. So I let my look linger on him and then I said, rather gently, he was so badly behaved. The situation was rather dire, inextricably grave. He was so badly behaved so badly behaved. <laughs> At first I put my phone onto my breach and enjoyed ignoring his calls. <laughs> but he was so badly behaved. In the end, I cut off his wallet crown, listening silently, burst into spontaneous applause. Security is staring at the box, muttering, Oh my God, Miss Burns, 
it's so dramatic but here at security we understand all your drinks are complimentary and with your baggage we'll give you a hand be at your gate for quarter to eight and enjoy darling oh yes enjoy darling your trip to the promised land Burns, don't book me for your wedding. <laughs> How many strings has your harp? And when did you start to play? I will answer these two questions 42 times a day. And as I'm wafting lightly through a treasury of Celtic delights, I will often get the question at some point in the night. Do you play ACDC or Motorhead or Nine Inch Nails? And I will smile politely, but inside I bore with Harpist and no, it does not rock. I plugged it in distortion slips, give it electric shocks. I've trilled it round in bands of bands from New York to this city. When the harp tries to rock, it winds up sounding pretty. When the universe gets started, it's time for rock and roll. God created hairy men. With electric guitars and soul. When it was time for Harpus, he was on his funny half hour. He wasn't expecting them to go play rock and roll and bar. So I'm your fucking Harpus, to know it does not rock. I plucked it in, the distortion slips, give it electric shocks. I've trilled it round in bands of bands from New York to this city. And when the harp tries to rock, it winds up sounding pretty. Cultured ladies and gentlemen of the Lyric Theatre. Would you're cultured now? Would you like a little example? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I am sitting on this stage knocking my pan in for you. <laughs> and you at this stage of the gig, gig give me just a wee feeble yes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Would you like a little example? Yeah! He's got mud on his face, a big disgrace, kicking his can all over the place. We will, we will rock your hapus to great addiction. We will, we will rock you into sing along in your best opera voices, darlings. Ready? I want you to raise the roof. Two, three, four. We will, we will rock you and once more with passion do it! We will, we will rock you. Note to self, that's much better in a bar. I'm your fucking harpist and no it does not rock. I plugged it in to distortion slips, give it electric shocks. I've trilled it round in bands of bands from New York to the city. And when the harp tries to rock, great, rock, great, it winds up sounding pretty. The way that it transpires to piss on it and set it on fire and fuck it from the hotel to nearest church bar. Cause I'm your fucking harpist and no, it does not rock. I plugged it in distortion slips, give it electric shocks. I've trilled it round in bands of bands from New York to this city. When the harp tries to rock, it winds up sounding pretty.
Rock and roll is just for kids. Theatre works you too hard. I'm always tempted to run away with a circus. Weddings are shit. <laughs> Funerals are kind of predictable. <laughs> Songwriting's just for daydreamers. What are we going to do now? I know. We could run away on the cruise ships. I should talk to Jean Fitzpatrick about that. We would probably need an agent for that type of work. Or we could get a van. Turn it into a wee theatre. Like the TARDIS. Imaginarium with a world stage in the boot and two gigs on the street. That's a way to go.
to Stephen Beggs. And Una, I can't pronounce her name. 